Are you thirsty? Because we are. Welcome to Thirsty Thursdays. Are you thirsty? It's your boy, Mr. Petty. It's your boy, Rick Stroh from Buzz and Whiskey. And today we're gonna do, okay, so let me, let me, I mean, let's pause for a second. I'm gonna tell you a story. As I'm getting older and I'm going to bars and I'm just, I'm, I'm done with these kid drinks, you know, the, the simple mixed drinks and stuff like that, the, the simple cocktails. So you know what I'm gonna do? Shit. Right, so you know what? I'm gonna step my game up. So as my taste buds are maturing, so should my drinks. So I'm hearing things like old fashions and Manhattans and you know, these, these uh, old man drinks. Let's just be real, old man oh, drinks. Right. So I decided I keep getting them confused though because they they're just I just like I'd get one and I'm like that's not what I wanted but I'm too embarrassed to send it back to the bar so I'm just sitting there just chugging you know again the, the the drinks are close to being the same but they're very different right so this is common yes a lot of people a lot of people mix up these two drinks right? I don't feel so bad a Manhattan is a shaken drink which means you need to shake it in a shaker and an old fashioned is a build drink which means you need to get in a glass and then you have to build it on top of each other right. So these are, these are two very similar, but also very different drinks. And also, a Manhattan has a history of saving Bart Simpson at one time for Fat Tony and his goons. So now, let's have you build this Manhattan. You have your shaker, you have ice in it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your whiskey in there. So about two ounces, so about six second pour. One, two, three, four, five, six, there you go. So next you got the sweet vermouth, just about an ounce. There you go. You don't wanna overwhelm it. You wanna, you wanna cut the taste of the whiskey, but you don't wanna Ooh. kill the whiskey. Yeah. That will wake you up. I bet it will. Next, you're gonna have a couple dashes of, of orange bitters. Not just you can do regular bitters, but I prefer to do orange bitters. Splash, splash. Like a guy putting I'm on aftershave. I was about to say, can we get it in the shaker? <laughs> but you just want to dash it on there like an old man putting on aftershave. Oh no, like oh no, not like the guy at the gym. No, you, you can smell them around. You can smell them around the corner. <laughs> put your towels on. Please put your towels on. I don't want to see your wrinkly balls like Johnny Knoxville. All right, so you got bitters, you got the vermouth, you got the whiskey. Next, you're just going to want to shake. Would you do the honors? Please, of course I will, because I got the guns for this. <laughs> All right, shaking. Next, you want to take an orange peel right there, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to rim your glass. to so give you that nice orange zest flavor as you go in, go in for your drink every time. And also knock over your shaker full of alcohol. And now pour. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now you're gonna wanna get a couple of maraschino cherries, put those in there. One cherry you do. And there you have it, a Manhattan. So let's try it. Yep, let's see how it tastes. Bottoms up. Wow. Most of the time at bars, I think they probably overdo on the either the bitters or the vermouth, but it's always a little bit more, uh, less, yeah, more acidic at the bars and something like that. But here, this is actually a really good balance of all of it. The vermouth and the bitters kind of like dulls the whiskey flavor, but not too much that you can't taste the whiskey because the whiskey is actually gives it the volume on it. Plus the chill of the ice is like, you know, it's a cool drink and the cherry just for garnish. I don't really taste the cherry. But. And so that's the sign of a really good drink right there where you have the, the key word that you use is balance. And that's the thing about it. A really good drink has really good balance to it. No, no ingredient is overwhelming any other ingredient anymore. And you just have a nice, soothing, calm drink. Well, we'll just move on next to the old fashioned. We're gonna go ahead and start to build this drink. Now, most people, they use sugar cubes. We don't have sugar cubes, so I'm just gonna use some regular sugar because you don't need all the fancy shit to make a good drink. So, you need, it says you need a half a teaspoon, but I'm gonna do a little bit more than a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna use my little bar spoon, or excuse me, my little stir spoon here. We're gonna do four of those. Next, we got regular bitters. I'm not gonna try and say the name because I don't wanna butcher it right now, but we just need a couple dashes and mine are gonna go into the glass. There we go. And then next, you're supposed to use rye whiskey, but you can use a regular whiskey too. This is a local to us because we're from the, the DMV, so in Maryland. This right here is Twin Valley Distillery. This is a uh, barrel aged whiskey. So it has an oak flavor to it and a, and a brisk, like smoky flavor to it. Um, it's just such an impactful, uh, nice tonality to it. Now that's a pour. Just because you don't want to have all of that sugar clumping up at the bottom of the drink, I like to genuinely do a stir. All right, nice little stir with our bar spoon here. 
Dissolve some of that sugar into the drink. There we go. Fancy. Uh, this one, the orange peel just goes right into the drink. And then there you have an old fashioned. So let's see what we got here. The sugar and the bitters almost combine to work in concert with the natural sugars inside the whiskey. But the rest of the components of the drink, they all work together. It actually increases the natural smokiness of the whiskey and it makes it, you know, a little bit more palatable, a little less uh, overbearing. So that's the sign of a really good old fashioned is once again, like I said, everything just working together in concert to make a really good balanced drink. Let's trade. Sure. Let's, let's see. Let's, let's see what we're working with. Check this out. Let's see what we got going. Let's see what we got going on here. I love the chill of the Manhattan. Oh, this really is good. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm. Adjectives fail me. This is something I would definitely drink like after like a, just to relax after a day of work or something. Like watching on like on maybe One Piece or something, just sipping on this. You ain't never watched One Piece in your life. So <laughs> Shaking this over ice really adds an element to this that makes it nice and cool and again way more palatable So so in conclusion um, both drinks are good Maybe I had it all wrong because I used to like not like Manhattan's as much as old fashions But after trying them here, I feel like you know, the bars are just doing it wrong so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean uh, once again, we come in and we show everybody a better way to do things at home you don't have to go out to the bar and spend that markup of $15 a glass. You can do it in your home by yourself. But, you know, thank you guys again for joining us here on Thirsty Thursdays. Join us every Thursday from here on out. And also, be sure to tune in to Bloods and Whiskey every Sunday at 12 p.m. on YouTube. Come take this shot. <laughs> the shot. The human torch was denied a bank loan. Pelvic power. Oh God! They said it means like like I'm like I'm like I'm his right. <laughs> like I'm his agent or something. You're my road agent. No, I'm the new Deuce Bigelow.